Hi, I'm Sarah from Heirloom Creations in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, and we are going back to doing a Ruler of the Month video. So each month you can join us and see a new ruler demonstrated and see how easy it is, make it effortlessly, and you can always go back and reference the videos. We fell in love with the Quick Curve Ruler recently by a new designer from a company called So Kind of Wonderful. This is the one I love. The one behind me is called Urban Nine Patch, and it kind of looks like a double wedding ring without a lot of the work. It does take a nine patch right in the middle and it starts curving them out with this ruler. This ruler is everything you need. After you cut a variety of strips, most of them will be eight and a half inches. This will be not only what you use to cut your curves, but it also has what you need for squaring up. You don't have to be perfect with the sewing because every time you sew a block, you are going to square it up and there is fudge room. So you'll be e easily going to get all the blocks the perfect size that you want them to go. There is also a table runner pattern that comes free with this ruler. So you'll have a kind of a practice one and I'll show you that in just a second. As you can see, we have a ton of patterns currently available in our store and on our website that you can order. These patterns all have with the use of the quick cur curve ruler. When you turn them over, you really can see how that design is gonna be very dy dynamic. As you look at the different patterns here, they really have kind of a little bit of a modern feel to them. Also gonna give you a great place for the quilting to show up. Now this is the table runner that is the free pattern that comes with the quick curve ruler. So here is a block and I'm gonna start off by showing you how that actually works. And it was a great practice piece. And so I, I do recommend give this little runner a try. You'll have a great project uh, to do and then have a finished item. Since most of the strips that you're gonna be working from are eight and a half inches, may I recommend an eight and a half inch wide Creative Grid ruler? That's a, it's bigger than your six and a half. It's actually my personal favorite size. So of course I had it and it's much easier to get all your strips cut ahead of time. All right, so using the quick curve ruler, we're gonna start off by showing how you make the curves, just, um, starting off with like the one that was in the table runner. Now, when you take a look at this ruler, there is a variety of lines and a couple of them are dotted. So as you look at the dotted lines, those are marked at eight and a half inches. So you set your fabric between those dotted lines and start cutting. There is only one cut area here on the ruler. Everything else is all for placement and measuring. So as we put this down, any size of rotary cutter will work with this ruler. We're gonna start cutting our first one. After our first one is cut, you're gonna see that on the ruler there are dotted lines and we're gonna move that over to get our next perfect cut. So these little kind of little small moon shapes are what a lot of the patterns are going to use. And right now the fabric is doubled up but you could go anywhere from four or six layers, whatever you're able to get your rotary cutter through. One strip of fabric will actually get you 14 pieces. So you can just keep on going so there's no waste when you cut that type of strip. All right, so right now I had it doubled up. So we actually have six, six different sizes or six pieces here. Now for the outside little edge that will turn this into our block. I'm gonna take your strip of fabric. I'm gonna quick use the ruler and cut it down into three and a half inch we'll do between the dotted lines since that's then I'll keep you watching there three and a half inch rectangles you just need a bunch of those each pattern will give you a different size here so these rectangles can vary from even down to as small as two inches once you do your rectangles this piece is going to get cut but between your dotted lines and cut your curve now what you just made was the piece that you need to form the block for these pieces. Oh, and then we're ready to start stitching those together. And I will show you how you sew the curves. Another shape that can be cut with the quick curve ruler is a lantern-like shape. And all we need to do is once again, take our eight and a half inch strip, line it up for our first cut. We're turning the ruler so we can get our first cut out of our strip. Line up our dotted lines, come as close to the edge as you can for minimal waste, and do your first cut. Then rotate the ruler around, and each pattern will guide you to what marking. This one I'm gonna actually cut 
at a four and three quarter mark here, and then also come back down to the other side and make sure you're getting the perfect alignment. That keeps us from all getting uh, skewed in any way. You always have two points of reference for the perfect block. And go ahead and cut the other side. As you continue to cut, all you need to do is turn the ruler around again, bring for your first cut right up to the edge of your fabric, and you'll have very little waste as you cut right on through here. So not much at all. And then keep on going. Then you'll be instructed to take once again a rectangle and slice it, and then you will have the outside edges for the lantern shape. For the Urban 9 patch I showed you earlier, you can take any block, well this one is the 9 patch, and it is uh, built so it has a little bit extra room. So these aren't actually just 9 patches, they are actually bigger in the corners. And when you take the curve ruler to the block to get the, the curves cut out of it, all you're going to do is find the groove where your rotary cutter is going to go and put it right at the corners. Line those up between the 8.5 inch markings on the ruler there and go ahead and cut. Now we're ready to cut our pieces that are going to be inset in there. And so we'll come around and place our curve on our rectangles that we cut earlier. And then that piece will go right in here. Notice that it is extra long. So that will go in uh, perfectly and then be able to be squared up for the perfect size block for putting them all together. For sewing the block together, the gentle curve, what you wanna do is make sure that your pieces are starting off, they kinda of look like this. They look like they're heading in two different directions there. When you line them up, you do wanna extend a little bit up to the top side. That's that quarter inch seam allowance. And just line up a little bit of the quarter inch placement together. And then when you start to stitch, those will come together here. All right, here's how we're gonna do it. In, on the top one, you can hold that in your right hand. The bottom one, in your left hand. So you're actually kind of crisscrossing your hands and pulling the edges together. Did you notice we're not using pins? Hooray, this is not really a pinning block at all. So when you actually are stitching, you're just guiding along your quarter inch mark or your quarter inch foot. When you stop, if you set your machine to stop in the down position, you can lift up the presser foot and then let it relax a little bit. And just kind of keep bringing it around. When you can't pull it any further, let it relax. Lift up the presser foot and bring it together. And you'll find what works best for you with your hands. So sometimes I kind of hold it opposite hands. Sometimes, yeah, it is always easy to hold it in opposite hands. It just feels weird. So follow that tip and go along all the way through. And really don't mind where the edges at the ends come out. Sometimes you'll find you'll be spot on. Sometimes you might be just a little bit less or a little bit more than normal. Remember, these blocks are all larger than they need to be, so they are going to get squared up. Now, what you're going to notice here is that when we flip it over and look at it, see which way this naturally wants to lean? That is the direction you're going to press. And again, no clipping or anything. Just press that down. You want to use a little best press to kind of hold that. It really makes it nice. Actually, all these fabrics have been uh, sprayed with best press before even starting to cut out the curves. And that just really helps hold everybody nicely together. Okay, for the next one, you're going to do that same exact thing where you're going to start off right sides together, kind of angle them at each other, and then stitch. Hold in opposite hands. The top one is in my right hand, the lower one is in my left hand, and I'm just bringing them together as they come close to my quarter inch seam allowance. The more you do of these, that's why I recommended that little table runner as kind of a beginner project. Even if you just make a couple blocks or turn them into a, a small little, um, yeah, a small runner or placemat or something, you never know where you could use extra blocks later.
Okay, so this is your block. Go ahead and press it. I do recommend pressing it in between each seam. Don't try to do both of these. I mean, you can, but when you go to the iron and, it, and you're trying to press these open, um, it's nice to have one already done and then the other one is easily placed. So press that and then I'll show you how we square up these blocks. The beauty of this gentle curve is that as you press it, you only, you don't have to do any clipping. Just press it in the direction it wants to go. You'll know when you see it. And then we're gonna use the ruler for squaring it up. For squaring it up, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our edges, we're gonna put one quarter inch next to the curve, center it if it's not exactly perfect, it will work out. Line it up here, but you also need to line it up down here. So as you come down here, bring it also to one quarter inch in. It also, it pretty much measures to two and one quarter inch. That's what you're centering your block on. After you do that, then you're just gonna go ahead and cut that side. Turn your block around. And finish it up. It will actually measure as a four inch block. So the second cut is fairly easy. You can just double check that everything looks good on uh, the sides there or up at the top and then cut it down. That is how easy it is to square it up. Every pattern will have a different square up notation, what to look for and how far to measure in, but then putting your blocks together is absolutely perfect.